the gift of water. Clear, cool, refreshing, abundant, and powerful. To 18th and 19th century North Carolinians, water and water power became a magnet for settlements in the Appalachians. By the early 1800s, a mill could be found on almost every stream near a community. As a reminder of this bygone era, a few of these picturesque mills have been restored to working order in Great Smoky Mountains National Park. It'll start turning. A visit to one brings a fascinating lesson in the ingenuity humans have applied to the task of grinding grain. Your water wheel is the power. Now underneath there, you got six gears. You've got a great big one on that, you water wheel on. It's called a bull gear. As they come on out through there, they get smaller. And the smaller they get, the faster they get. You come down to this little, it turns a stone. And when your water wheel makes one round, that stone will make 35. It seems remarkable now that farmers like John Cable, who built his mill here in Cades Cove in 1868, could do so using only local materials, including the grinding stones. You can set it to grind any texture you want to grind it. You can put them close together, and it'll be fine. You raise it up, it'll be coarse. Come on up higher and make grits. Then if you want crack corn for chickens, come on up a little higher. Stones, they've been in there 135 years, they're a reason. Most everything else was wood, the building, the mill wheel, even the gears made of tough hard apple wood so the gear teeth would resist cracking. Now the lubrication for that is tallow. We just go to the slaughterhouse and buy the fat and we cook it out ourselves. For farmers like Cable, milling was only a part-time job. Saturday was the traditional milling day. Fall of the year, they leave it out in the field on the stalk that dries. They gather it and put it in a corn crib with a shuck on it. And they just shuck and shell as they used it, and they like to go to mill once a week. And when the farmer brought his corn in here to get it ground, he didn't pay that miller in money. They gave him one-eighth of their corn. No money involved. Mingus Mill uses a different, though no less ingenious, approach to harnessing the water power. Well, there's a lot of technology in this mill that people don't understand. And when they come in and they say, where's your water wheel? And we say, we don't have a water wheel, we are a turbine mill. We divert the water off the stream down a waterway. And then it goes on to a flume Once the water gets to the mill, it goes into a gigantic column. It's 22 foot high, and it's four foot by four foot square on the inside, and this is called a penstock. And that's where we'll get all our water pressure. And at the base of the penstock, we have an 18 inch diameter pipe, and that feeds directly into the turbine. The energy that's created by the water coming through the turbine turns the turbine shaft which in turn turns the belt to the stone shaft and that causes our stone to start turning and then of course the grinding process begins. Because mills were such an essential part of the community, they became sort of a gathering place. While they were here, they probably traded some knives, they may have traded horses, they probably sat around the pot belly stove and told a lot of tales and maybe some lies to go along with it. So yes, this was like a general store basically on Saturday mornings. Now this particular turbine mill, if we rent it at full speed, which we do not because remember it's 117 years old and we don't want to break it down, we could turn out a bushel of cornmeal which is 56 pounds in approximately an hour. That was fantastic in 1886. And it's all about water power, it doesn't cost a thing, it's just Mother Nature's great forces. So step back in time with a visit to one of these working mills and you'll get a glimpse of what life was like not so long ago here in our state. 
even if for just a moment.